Real people, real breakthroughs. This is the Psychology of Eating podcast, where psychology and nutrition meet to uncover the true causes of our unwanted eating concerns. Your relationship with food will never be the same. Now, here's your host, eating psychology expert and founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, Mark David. Welcome, everybody. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, and here we are in the Psychology of Eating podcast. I'm with Linda today. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. Yay. Glad you're here. <laughs> glad we're to be here. Yes. So for viewers and listeners who are new to the Psychology of Eating podcast, here's what this is about. This is a live client session. Linda and I have not worked together before in this way. And this is, you know, our opportunity to get together and, and see, you know, Linda, what you want to work on. And I'm going to ask questions for about 15, 20 minutes. And then we're going to just launch in and and see if we can make some changes and make some shifts. Does that feel good for you? Yes, it would. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So if you could wave your magic wand and get whatever you want from this session, what would that look like for you? Well, I would love to be able to learn to nourish myself in a way that is in tune with my, my body and in my natural flow. And I'd like to improve my health and and lose some weight, but in a way that is not focused on deprivation and control, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and which is what I've always done in the past to lose weight. And um, yeah, learn to do this in a way that sets a good example for my daughter, who's 11. And yeah, I have an idea of what's causing a lot of these issues, but I don't seem to be enlightened enough or resonating at a high enough level to be able to see the solutions. So I'm hoping that that we can come up with some. So if you could define the issue, like you said, you know, I think I have some ideas of what's causing these issues. What, what feels like the issue or the issues for you? Well, um, I know that I, I am emotionally eating quite a bit. We're under quite a bit of family stress right now. Um, and also probably due to my past of all or nothing um, masculine left brain kind of health techniques they've all sort of they're all sort of contributing to make it difficult right now mm-hmm. so your past meaning you've done a lot of dieting or the, yes. explain yes well I didn't even really have to worry about my weight till I was about 30 and then you know I, I felt like I had this in my 20s and then I got married and felt like I had to make I don't know better meals or something so I started eating in a way that wasn't really natural to me you know lots of lots more fat and cheese and carbs and all of the things that maybe aren't that good for me. And, um, and, but I sort of kept it in control in my thirties because I had a really, a really manual labor job for seven or eight months of the year. So in the winter, a little bit, I'd pack on the pounds, but I always knew that I'd lose it later. So it wasn't until after I had my child when I was 37, probably the next year that I started to really gain weight and not seem to be able to lose it. And then I started sort of more extreme measures. I was kind of in a bad place at that time. Like I, I was trying to work and have a baby and, and uh, you know, and I wasn't eating well. I was drinking too much. I was working too hard. And it all sort of came tumbling down. And so I quit my job and I, my self-esteem sort of plummeted because I wasn't contributing, you know, financially to the family. And so I really threw myself into a transformation. It was like 100% on. And um, at the time, it felt great. I thought I was doing you know, something wonderful for myself and my body. What do you mean I, I threw myself into a transformation? What does so that mean? I was eating completely clean, exercising full on, not missing any workouts, mm-hmm, um, not going off my diet at all. And I realize now that I was just sort of replacing one addiction with another. And it was sort of my way of gaining some control mm-hmm. when I didn't feel like I had a lot. So so how much weight do you want to lose? Well, I think it would be great to lose about 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, the funny thing is I'm not naturally heavy. Like I think I have to work for this. <laughs> Why I'm doing that, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so when was the last time you were 50 pounds less? Um, four years ago and probably 10 times in the five years before that between Mm -hmm. being heavy. 
So yeah. you have to work to get there. You have to do a lot. Sounds like you have to do a lot of diet watching and exercise. Is that true? Um, I think I have to work to get heavy. That's what I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm doing this. I think, I think because I have been in the natural flow in my life, I think I can do it. I just don't know why I'm having so much trouble doing it now. Mm-hmm. Can I ask how old you are? 49. Uh-huh. And where it's like, so are you under a doctor's care? Are you, do you know where you are sort of on the menopause spectrum? Probably peri, pre, yeah, mm-hmm. ha- hasn't started yet, but I, I have some symptoms. I think it's coming. Mm-hmm. How tall are you? Five, seven. Mm-hmm. So, and how much are you weighing right now? 200. <laughs> okay. So, so you want to lose 50 pounds and... Previously, you've been, you've been kind of yo-yo dieting, it sounds like. You're kind of either on or off. Is that true? Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'll go on sort of a hardcore hard strict regimen, and it literally lasts about three hours, as long as it takes to maybe snap some pictures and get to the closest focus board, and then it's all up from there. Mm-hmm. Meaning what? I'm, I, meaning you ex- say that in different words. I gain weight instantly right away after. I don't maintain at all. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. I'm gaining or I'm losing. Mm -hmm. So uh, where do you hold steady? Where do I hold steady? Yeah. Well, I've been at this weight for a few years now. I sort of stopped dieting about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I haven't found something to replace it with. Like I just, I'm still, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, eating nutrient dense food and I'm, I'm just eating too much. And I don't know why I can't seem to stop that. Mm-hmm. I get it. So what's, are you eating three meals a day? Um, three and probably a couple of snacks. Uh huh. And when do you think you eat too much food? Which meals, which, which snacks? It's actually right now, all of them. Mm hmm. When I'm trying to lose weight, it's, yeah, it's later in the day, but right now it's basically all of them. Do you tend to be a fast eater, moderate eater, slow eater? Yeah, I've been really working on this, but I'd say I'm still a fast eater. Mm -hmm. I think that's something to do with hiding the evidence. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So do you find you eat in secret when you're, when it looks like you're snacking or overeating or? Sometimes, sometimes, Uh yeah. Got it. And when was the first time you started dieting? How old were you? Um, I did a few little things in my 30s, but like I say, it wasn't really a huge issue then, and it was probably whatever was on the cover of the woman's magazine at the checkout stand, but seriously, after my child was born. Mm-hmm. And how, so, are you, and you're married right now? Yes. How's your husband with his weight? He's pretty good. He doesn't have to work very hard at it. Sometimes he'll feel like he's gained too much, but it, he almost just has to think about losing it and it comes off. He doesn't have to work very hard at it. Mm-hmm. And how is he with your weight? Not good. <laughs> yeah, tell me what that means. Um, he's very judgmental and um, it really tries to shame me to change. Mm. And uh, yeah, which makes it harder to change. <laughs> you know, some days I'll want to go for a walk and then they'll say, you better go for a walk or something. <laughs> I don't want to go then. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I like it. Sometimes it's really discreet for a long time, just sort of like sighing if I have an extra plate of food or an extra serving. And, and then sometimes just outright he loses it. Yeah. So losing it means what? Ranting and raving about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how are you still, you know, like last summer we were going on a big sailing holiday with friends. And just the day before he sort of lost it like, here we are, another sailing season. You know, we spent all this money on coaching tuition and you're still fat. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. That must be hard for you. Yeah. Yeah. So have you ever had a conversation with him about changing the dialogue? Lots, yeah. Uh-huh. And what happens? It'll be good for a while. And then, yeah, then it, it'll be back that way again. Mm-hmm. So... If you had the ideal weight right now, mm-hmm. and he was happy about your weight, what's the one thing you would want to change in the relationship to make better? Respect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would like to be accepted for what I am, even if I, yeah, no matter what that is. At the mm-hmm. time. So do, is, are there places other than weight where he can kind of get 
picky and judgy and that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. We're struggling with some issues around our daughter right now, so that's mm-hmm. been a challenge. Mm-hmm. So what happens? He, it's sort of his way or the highway? What, mm-hmm. what's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like she's having trouble. She's got what, well, doctors are calling a extreme anxiety disorder. She has trouble getting to school a lot. And um, we deal with it in really different ways. Like I try to talk to her and, you know, find out what's really going on. And his way is to, you know, sort of drag her screaming to the car and then screaming into the school and have her restrained there. And she just has to better accept that or, or not. And, and um, I sort of think that, you know, she's... I don't even know if she really has a severe anxiety disorder. I think she's just really super sensitive. She's like, you've talked about the canary and the coal mine, you know, she, she is in tune. She, she knows what her body needs. It's amazing. And, and I think it's kind of interesting that everybody wants to medicate out of her where I'm trying to get to, (laughs) but yeah, to answer your question, that's another area of stress in the relationship. So what do you think is causing your daughter's anxiety about going to school? Um, perfectionism Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, she, like her, her teacher says she's the best student in the class. She listens attentively. She, her first drafts of things are better than, you know, everybody else's edited ones, but she's trying too hard to be perfect and it, it catches up to itself after a while because obviously you can't be right. Mm -hmm. And that also is part of the reason why when I recognized that in her, I stopped dieting because I didn't want to pass that on to her. Mm. Um, don't ever want her to deal with those issues. So, Yeah. So you think it's kind of perfectionism. So then, even though she's such a good student, then she gets ang- anxious about going to school because... Because um, <coughs> she, she can never be perfect. And also, she's very sensitive. So, like, she feels people too mm-hmm. much. So it's hard just to get through a, a middle school when you feel so deeply. So it's sort of a combination. And she can't be perfect. In, mm-hmm. in class, obviously. So it started when, when academic expectations went up, like the earlier grades were no problem because you could almost be perfect. The teacher always said, oh, that's wonderful, but <laughs> then higher expectations. So let me ask you this question, Linda. Let's say, just, uh, I'm, I just like to make up scenarios just to kind of play. Let's say you knew for a fact that your weight was going to stay exactly like this for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, just, just we're just playing here. What would you do? <sighs> That's a really good question. It's hard to answer because everything I I know I've been putting so many things on hold until I reached. And, and for me, it's not just about the weight. It's about you know, for example, I want to be a coach, and how can you do that if you're living a really unhealthy lifestyle, right? So mm-hmm. me, it's it's a little bit more about the way that I'm living my life. Um, then the weight, but I guess I just have to do it anyway, (laughs) Mm -hmm. live anyway and accept myself the way that I am. But that doesn't sound like a very nice proposition at all (laughs) for you. No, 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 that sounds terrible. Um, is your mom still alive? Yes. Are you close? Yeah. How's her relationship with her body, her weight? I, good. I don't ever remember her ever being on a diet. We lived on a little orchard and ate really healthy food and lots of fruit and vegetables. And, you know, my parents are kind of salt of the earth people. I don't think they'd ever even think about dieting. (laughs) It wouldn't be part of, yeah. And she's been slim all her life. So is my dad. Mm -hmm. So give me a sense also of just, just a couple of sentences or less. What is a typical breakfast for you? When I'm on or when I'm off? <laughs> Got it. When you're off. Um, a couple of pieces of turkey bacon and an egg and a piece of bread, toast. That's off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Keep going. So when you're off, what does lunch look like? Um, usually leftovers from the day before. I try to always have something on hand to warm up. And it sort of depends, too. My life is really divided into two seasons, my full-on work season and my off season. Mm-hmm. So if I'm talking about my off season which is about four or five months of the year when I'm home more. It's usually leftovers heated up and uh, whatever else is around. Often then I'll maybe eat a little bit too many processed or starchy carbs at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. 
Got it. And what is dinner looking like when you're off? Um, it's always, you know, it's pretty nutritious. Again, a little bit too much fat, maybe like a pasta and meat and vegetable. We always have, you know, reasonable amount of vegetables with every meal. And But, um, yeah, maybe a bit too much. Again, I'm trying to please other people with my cooking and not maybe eating what naturally is right for me. So more fatty foods and... Mm -hmm. So what would be natural for you if you were making a dinner? Like, give me an idea. <laughs> well, it'd be lower fat. I might have a little bit of pasta with, with some protein and a vegetable, but not like a really nice cheese sauce or something to have it in. Or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't make a salad that's full of a you know, high-cal dressing or, you know, I'd eat enough and I'd, I wouldn't like totally deprive myself, but I wouldn't eat quite as fatty food as I'm eating now. Got it. Or got as it. much as of it. Okay. Are you on any kind of prescription meds right now? Um, I have asthma, so I have, I have two inhalers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I take something for high blood pressure. Got it. Yeah. How long have you been on high blood pressure medication? On and off for about eight years. Uh huh. Any side effects of those that you notice? Um, I had a diuretic for a while and I didn't feel very good on that, mm -hmm. but she's changed my medication and it's better. Okay. And let me ask you this question. If you lost the weight, how would life be different? <laughs> well, I'd have a lot of self-esteem back. Mm -hmm. I would, I feel like if I, and for me it's more about not having to worry about the weight. I, I think I'd have a lot more energy to do what I'm called to do in my life. And I think I, uh, you know, I really want to be a coach, but I don't feel very worthy right now. Mm -hmm. And, and I really think that because of all of my experience and wonderful training, I think I could be a really good coach. Mm -hmm. And also I would show up differently in the world. You know, like I talk about my daughter withdrawing. Well, I have too. You know, I, you know, I hide, hide my heart under my fat and then I hard, hide my fat under this huge hoodie that I wear whenever I go out and about town. And, you know, I've withdrawn from my life too. Mm -hmm. And I want to get back out there and feel proud of who I am. Got it. So I have some thoughts about you and weight and food and, and life. And let me just take a couple of minutes to kind of piece them together and, and, and then we'll see sort of what lands and what's helpful for you. You know, as I'm listening to you speak, I'm really kind of getting how you've kind of been on this up and down. It really is, you know, what we often talk about is yo-yo dieting and I gain the weight and I lose it. And I'm either on the diet or I'm off the diet. And, you know, I think of yo-yo dieting as being in your car and driving down a country road. And if you're driving down a country road where there's one lane that you're in and there's another lane coming against traffic, and instead of just kind of following the straight country road, you're going like this. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll still get where you need to go. But it's a weird ride. It's <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> It's very discombobulating to be going down the road like that and where it's just as easy to go straight. Mm -hmm. um, so yo-yo dieting is really about yo-yo kind of <laughs> mind. Yeah, I get that, yeah. And when I asked you what would be the, what's the big win when you lose the weight, you said I'd have my self-esteem back. Now, what's interesting to me is that you've been at the target weight that you want before, mm -hmm. and you don't stay there. Yeah. And in my estimation, one of the key things that you're looking for is your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You're looking to hit the place where, here's me, I'm comfortable with myself, I'm okay with myself, it feels good to be me, and I'm going to do the things that I can do, that I want to do, that I'm called to do, that's kind of in me, that I just want to do. But I don't have my self-esteem because I look like this. And I'm behaving badly. <laughs> right, and I'm behaving badly. So what happens is when you're behaving badly, of course you're going to punish yourself even more. 
and it's kind of this little trigger because when we're on the all or nothing diet, as soon as you go slightly, as soon as you deviate slightly, for most people, that's the sign that, okay, I'm dropping off the face of the earth now. I did that one little thing wrong. Therefore, everything collapses. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to get back to that in a second. It's, you know, your daughter is kind of living in under that umbrella. And I'm not saying it's your fault. I just want you to hear that. But you guys are in the same little tribe. The little tribe meaning you, your husband, your daughter. So here's you looking for your self-esteem. You get to the weight you want and you still technically don't have the self-esteem. Otherwise, you would stay there. Yeah. So then the belief for some reason gets further entrenched that but really when I lose this weight, then I'll have my self-esteem back. And that's the place where I want to see you make an intervention in your own mind and in your own life. Because you hitting that weight and having your self-esteem and feeling good about yourself doesn't really happen. It might happen. You probably get high for a little bit. You probably mm. feel good for a little bit. And then things start falling apart. Yeah. And I sort of get that. And that's why I haven't done it for so long. But then I haven't, like I said, found a way to get to what I want. <laughs> yeah. And I think partly because you're trying to focus on the food. Partly because you can't figure out how to do the food thing. And you're trying to figure out, well, what do I have to do with the food and the body and the meals and the fat and the exercise and whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see you put weight loss aside for a while, but in a very different way than you put it aside. Because you okay. kind of put it aside right now, but not... You've taken step one, which is to say, whoa, this isn't working really. Yeah. But you're not quite sure why it's not working. Mm -hmm. So my sense of why it's not working is because you're kind of looking for love in all the wrong places. And the love means I love myself. The love means I acknowledge myself. I accept myself. I'm not going to kick my own butt all the time. You're looking for love through weight loss. You're looking for self-esteem through weight loss, and it has to come from a different place at this point. I don't know, like I, like I truly don't know if you've ever had yourself in the way that you want to have yourself. And I, it's, I was particularly interested in hearing about you and your husband um, because he's not making the job easy for you, and... I'm, I'm going to just step to your side of the court for a moment and just be your advocate. So I'm not making him a bad guy hmm. at all. But if I'm on your side and I'm advocating for you, then that kind of dynamic does not work for you. No. It is hard <laughs> no. to help your loved one uh, find their self-esteem by shaming them in that direction. Now, he doesn't know a better way right now he, he's he's wired differently and my guess is there's a part of you because you know of our roles as men and women that okay well he's the husband and he's got the bigger voice and he's got the bigger temper and all that kind of stuff that you know he kind of gets his way because he's because he's got the biggest temper is what it feels like <laughs> so that doesn't work for you clearly yeah. and you, even you reaching the weight there's no guarantee because what's going to happen is my guess is you reach the weight there's still a gun pointed to your head by you and him because mm -hmm. then if you gain the weight back you're going to be right back to square one yeah so it's kind of the ecosystem that you're living in does not allow you to relax into yourself because if you don't have the weight you're bad if you don't have to wait that you want your bed, and if you do have it, you can drop into bed in any given moment, yeah. which is what's happened in the past. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to be hard for you because you hit that place. It's not sustainable given how you're doing it. No. And what I believe is that as you start to find your self-esteem first and foremost, 
independent of how the heck much you weigh, mm -hmm. then you will start to drop in and be able to really, for the first time, get where you want to go in a sustainable way. Mm -hmm. You, It's hard to stick to a, a, a way of eating that's natural and nourishing for us if I exist in a, in a way of thinking mm -hmm. that's not natural and nourishing to me. Yeah. So the way of thinking that you're living in is, I'm no good. <laughs> I don't have self-esteem because I don't look a certain way and he won't love me and I won't love me and whoever else we make up won't love me until I hit that place. And to me, there's a part of you that just needs to step into your, step into your warrior woman here. <laughs> just step into your warrior woman and begin to create some boundaries for yourself with your husband as best you can. And I don't know what kind of help you can get if there's coaching or counseling that you guys can get because believe it or not, I think there's a lot of action that can happen there when your voice starts to be heard in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening is he's not only shaming you around your weight, but it's, if a man shames a woman around her weight, he has the voice of all the haters coming through him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it's not like, oh, he's being such a jerk. Nobody else does that but my husband. Like, no, there's a lot of people who do that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of men who do that. There's a lot of women who do that. And... So when somebody shames us for how we look or shames us for our weight, they have the invisible voices of all the culture and all the weight haters behind them. So it lands even harder in our system because there's so much weight hate in the atmosphere. So you have a difficult job right now. I, I'm, I'm, it's not easy, but I think it's really important. And if I was getting paid $10 million dollars, right now, to help you lose the weight that you want to lose forever in an easy and sustainable way so you never have to worry about it. This is the approach I would take. Now, if I was getting paid $10 million to help you lose the weight in three months, sure, you and I would do all the nonsense that you've done before. <laughs> you lose it. We push you. We force you. We would shove you. And then you lose the weight, but because you don't have yourself and because there's this constant threat in your environment and in your head, that, oh my God, you're going to go back there, it means you don't have yourself yet. Yeah. Having yourself means that I'm going to love myself and stand by myself and accept myself no matter what I weigh. Mm -hmm. Do I want to weigh different? Sure. Do I want to weigh less? Sure. But I'm not going to smack myself down. <laughs> I'm not going to hate on myself because I'm not there. That would be no different than you saying to your daughter, you know, I don't want you to be my daughter anymore. You suck. You're not so good. I don't, like, I, I don't like how you show up. When you show up the way society likes and that I think is better, then I'm going to love you again. Mm -hmm. But until then, you actually can't be the real you. Yeah. Uh, it would be horrible if you said that to her. <laughs> and she gets that already. So. Right? <laughs> so that's the, but that's the dialogue that I'm saying is in your head right now. Yeah. And... This is about you claiming your power as a woman. It's about you claiming yourself in relationship with men, and in particular with your husband. And I don't know how that's going to look for you, but what I do know is that you have to stand by yourself and not get bullied, and not get insulted. It's not okay. Yeah. One insult is not okay. It's no different than somebody throwing a rock at you. It's not okay. Especially not from your loved one. Especially not from the guy that you live with. Because that's going to smack your self-esteem down. Mm -hmm. So what I see happening is that you're hungry for that self-esteem, but the setup will never allow you to have it. And the shift that has to happen starts with you. Mm 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't start with your body looking different because we've been there and done that. Yeah. And I've known that for a while since I started to follow you. I just have a hard time figuring out how to get there. But I'll mm -hmm. keep listening. <laughs> so how to get there is very small and deliberate baby steps right now around having a conversation with your husband, either between the both of you or between somebody who could facilitate a conversation like that where you're having a come to Jesus conversation. <laughs> yeah. And you're letting him know what does not work. Mm -hmm. You draw a boundary around insults and you draw a boundary around shaming. Yeah. And I can get where that might be scary for you. And that's the place where you claim your dignity. Yeah. That's the place where you claim your self-acceptance. And while you're putting weight aside for a little while, it's like, again, previously you're putting the weight loss and the dieting aside because you're not quite sure how to do it anymore to get where you want to go because you know it's not working. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to put it aside with the caveat that here is what I'm working on for the first time in your life to hang out for three, four, five, six months and allow yourself to start to love this body as it is and allow yourself to feel some self-dignity as you are right now. We're, putting, we're pushing this on pause because you, you, you have all this stress hanging over you about the weight and you've set it up that I need to lose this weight to get where I want to go. So I want you to disprove that to yourself. You don't need to lose that weight to get to where you want to go. In fact, Focusing on the weight to find your self-esteem is a dead end. Yeah. And it sounds impossible. It sounds impossible. And, it's, and, and Linda, I have to tell you, it's one of the weird conundrums of life because I'm with you. If I looked away exactly how I want to look, I'm going to feel better about myself. But the reality is, and you know this, how many times have you met a woman, a man who has all the perfect good looks and they still have low self-esteem and they lots. still don't love them. Lots. <laughs> lots. I've been meeting them since I've been in junior high school. And, and they could be adults now and they can have everything and still be suicidal. So what we learn, I think, on, on a more soul level, on a deeper level, is that for many people, for many of us, we can't change the outer first in order to feel better. We have to work on the inner. And that might sound cliche. Um, and it might sound like, oh yeah, okay, I get that. And now let me try to lose weight. Um, because you're always going to want to like slip into that. And finding your self-esteem <laughs> means being more of a bulldog being stronger and being your own guard dog, really protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. And if somebody tries to take down your self-esteem, whether it's your husband or it's you, I want you to start barking. <laughs> okay. You know, externally or internally, it's <laughs> like you have to develop an immune response in your mind to the places where you start to drain your self-esteem and you drain your self-dignity mm -hmm. in the moment. And that's a practice. And it's really about you kind of claiming you for the first time ever. Uh, how's all this landing for you? Oh, it really resonates deeply, yeah. It makes tons of sense. And um, yeah, it's definitely... I can see that that's what I have to work on now. I kind of have a little bit, but hearing it come from you that way it's really enforces that. So, You know, one of the big pieces also, Linda, is I really want you to th consider this one. Um, stop apologizing. <laughs> and what I mean is you do not have to apologize to anyone for your weight or your diet, or your relationship with food. You don't 
necessarily apologize in a very verbal way. Oh, I'm sorry for having this extra weight, or I'm sorry for going off yeah. my diet. But there's an apology that kind of lives with you. Mm-hmm. It's yes. kind of like it's this little birdie that sits on your shoulder that's apologizing for who you are. Absolutely. And there's no need to apologize. Zero. You're fine who you are. You're somewhere, somewhere in the game. And this happens for most of us. We get certain messages and they get in. We hear certain things. We adopt certain beliefs and they get in. Mm -hmm. And we start to believe I'm not good enough. We start to believe I'm not okay as who I am. And then we develop all kinds of behaviors that kind of reinforce that. One of the behaviors for you that reinforces I'm not okay, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable is... I apologize and I'm sorry for being me and I <laughs> promise I'll be a good girl. I'll get on this diet and I'm going to be a good girl. Um, I don't want you to be a good girl. I want you to take care of yourself, but that's different from being a good girl. When you go into good girl, you're thinking, okay, big people who are you know, tougher than me and have more self-worth than me and, and more valuable than me. See, look, I'm going on this nice diet so I can lose weight, so you're going to accept me. You kind of drop into being that 13-year-old girl who wants approval. Yeah. And it doesn't work for you. And, and that's a lifelong strategy that wants to change. So it's you really, really, really stepping into your royalty it's stepping into your queenhood it's stepping into your dignity on a day-to-day basis you won't get there tomorrow or the next day this is like slow digging um it's the it's the worst kind of work for most people because it's not like winning the lottery it's not like taking a pill it's not instant gratification it's going to bring up a lot of challenge One of the reasons it's hard for you to slow down with food is if you start to slow down, what's going to happen is you're going to start to feel more. (laughs) And some of those feelings are going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. It's going to be feelings of, I don't love myself, feelings of, I'm not good enough. And it's going to be feelings of, I'm pissed off. (laughs) That's in there too for you. So I want you to start to notice how and and you know it's never too late to work on self you know the things i'm saying to you it's it's like the work never stops we could it's, we could be on our deathbed and i watched both my parents on their deathbeds they were still having insights and realizations they were still going oh my goodness you know i did this i did that i wish i could have done this better it's it's people people die with those thoughts So while we're living, (laughs) I would love to see you get where you want to go. And you getting where you want to go means you're owning you more. And one of the ways to get there is to start to monitor yourself. Watch when you are living in an apology. Sometimes it's just how you're sitting and being with yourself. Sometimes it's how kind of you're holding yourself when you're sitting with people or around your husband or here or there. And, you know, you mentioned, wow, I put on my hoodie and I don't want you to see me. Um, I want people to see you. Here you are. You deserve to be here as much as anyone else. You work hard. You care. You're a loving being. You're doing the best you can. And you're raising a beautiful, amazing daughter. And, like, congratulations. That ain't easy. (laughs) You know, you have relationship challenges. Welcome to the club. You know, most people do who are in relationship. And I want you to remember so, so well that your weight does not define you. And I am all for you having the kind of body that makes you feel good. But what I am saying to you to win my imaginary $10 million is that you have to put first things first because your strategy that you've been doing a long time does not work for you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to take a lot of 
you digging deep into yourself and your soul to find that place where you go, oh, here's how I want to proceed. Here's, here's a piece of my dignity. And it's you standing up for yourself like never before. Standing up for yourself again means even though I weigh this much or even though I might have just emotionally eat, I am still going to love myself. I'm still going to respect myself. And I'm still going to do the best to help myself get up off the floor and start again. And if you're focused more on that, you will eventually find that your eating becomes a little more natural. Because right now, when you're eating, your mind gets very confused. Eating is just a place of confusion for you. Because mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out, again, how to use the food to change the body. Yeah. And nothing makes sense because you've read so many things. So that's why... I'm asking you to just put that aside because you'll never figure it out. It has to be a natural unfolding for you at this point. If I was talking to somebody else, it might be a whole different story. Mm -hmm. We might be talking about, okay, let's figure this out nutritionally. Mm -hmm. Your fix, your, your, your shape-shifting at this point in the game is not going to come from anything you do nutritionally, in my belief, mm -hmm. in my experience, based on what you've told me. It's going to start with that inner shift first because once you have you, you will be able to relax into food a bit more. Once you're not worried about, oh my God, how's this food going to impact my weight? Because even though you're still eating what you want, there's still a little voice in the back of you going, but I'm not okay Yeah. <laughs> how I look. So this food is impacting me, but uh, I don't want to deal with this. Pretty much, yeah. Right. So instead, you are dealing with this we're putting weight loss aside for a handful of months and we're focusing on the powerful question called how can I claim my self-dignity every day? How can I claim my self-respect every single day? How can I show my daughter and demonstrate to her just by who I am and my actions that I, her mother, who she's going to be someday, she's going to be your age someday, Show her what it's like to be a woman who's owning her body and owning her life no matter what. I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful gift to give her. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Good. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Thoughts, questions? No, I, everything, everything is really resonating with me. And I, I have been really focused on the internal shifts, or I've been trying to, but I'm not there yet. But I hadn't thought so much about how I was putting myself out there in the world. That's been something that I've really gained from this conversation. I've been more trying to deal with how I deal with things inside. But, yeah, I really need to put myself out there in a different way. Yes. And part of that means show up. Part of that means look how you dress. And show up and move and dress and interact <laughs> and speak in a way where you weigh 50 pounds less. Yeah. I'm burning the hoodie. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I'd like to be there for that little barbecue. That should be really good. Yeah. And it's that kind of thing. You know, I really like that. Like, I'm going to take this thing and torch it. I, I really would love to see the part of you that, you know, can be a bitch come out. Or the part of you that could be a warrioress come out. Mm -hmm. The part of you that says, here's a line do not cross it. Mm -hmm. There's certain things you can say. There's certain things you can say because they're insulting. Yeah. I am your daughter's mother. Treat me with disrespect. You're treating her with disrespect. She's going to yeah. learn that and she's going to find a guy who's going to treat her with disrespect. I know, disrespect. and I've been saying that over and over. <laughs> it hasn't been landing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know something? It's okay to keep saying it then. And you don't even have to say it to try to convince him, this is a little subtle thing. You say it because you know it in your bones. Mm -hmm. And you're not trying to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not even trying to prove yourself. You're just coming from the place where I am her mother. I see something you don't. Yeah. You need to get on board with this. Mm -hmm. And there it is. You spoke the truth. His choice to hear it or not. 
but you have to continuously speak the truth inside yourself mm -hmm. and outside yourself. Mm -hmm. Outside especially for you because that's how, that's how you claim your self-respect. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was listening to Emily's podcast on authenticity yesterday, and I, I always thought I was authentic. But then when I listened to that, I realized I'm not really because I'm not speaking my truth mm -hmm. strongly enough. You know, I try to be honest and, and respectful of people, but that really hit home with, for me too. And hearing it again now, I realize that I haven't been. <laughs> and sometimes authenticity looks very sweet. And sometimes it's very real. And sometimes it's very intimate. And sometimes it's very loving. And sometimes it's got a lot of fire to it. Mm -hmm. And... I just really want you to find the place inside you where you vigorously defend your right to be honored and respected and not smack down. Yeah. And as long as I do that to myself, it will be easier. There will be an invisible invitation for others to do it. If I am insulting self, if I'm saying to me, this body's not good enough, this being's not good enough, this weight, this person's not good enough, it's just a little bit easier to draw that to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or it's a little bit easier to imagine that that's how the world is thinking about me. Mm -hmm. So really the practice is you standing by you. Yeah. And you catching yourself as soon as you start to apologize for who you are and what you look like. And even notice how you stand when you're out and about. Notice how you sit. Yeah. Notice, just catch yourself. Like, how am I being right now with the people around me just <laughs> sitting here silently? Am I okay? Yeah. I didn't even realize I was doing that until I heard you say that. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I, I need to work on that. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I said it's, it's, it's working on not letting your life and your body be an apology. Mm -hmm. your life and your body it's you I'm here I made it I've gotten this far yeah I want to change certain things but you know something let's celebrate <laughs> <laughs> and let's spend some time being okay where I am and not having to manipulate this food and this body so I can be different because it's exhausting it doesn't work and you're yeah. too old for this nonsense <laughs> yeah that's true too <laughs> You know, it's just, yeah. it's just a waste of your time at this point. Mm -hmm. And your time is valuable. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the ways that you think you can live life as if you're not apologizing, but you're, you're saying, I'm here? Well, I'm going to stop hiding. You know, I, there's so many things that I don't do anymore. I don't go to the pool. My daughter loves the pool. I haven't taken her to the pool in years. I like the pool too, but I don't go because I would be embarrassed. And, and other things I like to do, I like to go to the cross-country ski trails, and I just don't like to go anywhere. I live in a small town. Everybody kind of isn't too far removed from each other, so I have this you know, humiliation of gaining the weight back, and I don't, like I say, I've been hiding and missing out on things that I really enjoy doing, and I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, going out for a coffee. So what if I, <laughs> you know, again, small town. <laughs> right. Um, and then, you know, people were so supportive when I was losing the weight that that's part of the reason why it's, it's kind of embarrassing to go <laughs> out. But, sure. So yeah. that's, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because this is a challenge that so many people encounter where all of a sudden, if you start to lose weight... There's a lot of people around us who go, oh, good girl, good boy. We, <laughs> wow, I'm noticing you now. Wow, you look so good. Mm -hmm. Implication, the other way, you look like <laughs> yeah. yucko. Yeah. Um, now we like you. Now we notice you. Now, it doesn't matter. You could be at home vomiting up every meal. You could be exercising mm -hmm. six hours a day, neglecting your family, mm -hmm. And, and, and doing crack cocaine, but as long yeah. as, look, wow, she's so thin. <laughs> People are going to love you. Yeah. So this is a place where it's such a great challenge. And it is a challenge to be in the world and start to learn how to be free 
of the opinions of others. Because mm -hmm. everybody's going to have an opinion yeah. of you, of me. Yeah. Some people have good opinions of you. Some people don't. Some people will like you better if you had more weight. <laughs> so it's, it's, and, and we can't please everybody. So this is your opportunity, and, and it's an interesting challenge because it is a challenge because you have to dig deeper and find that place where you have this invisible force field up against people's opinion and you still respect yourself and you still have dignity, and it's their issue. Mm -hmm. If they're not honoring you and respecting you for being a human being, mm -hmm. that's their problem. Yeah. They've got to be working on themselves. It's not, oh, I have to be working on myself so I could lose the weight so <laughs> you people could like me better. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> right? It's, re it, it, it's, it's, it's insanity. Yeah, yeah. I'm too old for that. You are. So this is where you have to start to catch yourself and you have to start to make those tiny shifts. Mm -hmm. So when you've been saying, well, yeah, like I know a lot of this information. I kind of know what to do. This is now your time to actually make those changes, baby steps. They will be hard. They will be uncomfortable. It's not going to go, ta-da, I love myself now. <laughs> you will have uncomfortable moments, and it's you getting comfortable being uncomfortable with people's judgments, whether they're real judgments or the ones you imagine. Mm -hmm. And you starting to wear a whole new Linda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't bought clothes at this weight, so the things that I'm wearing are <laughs> really... And I know better. I know mm -hmm. better. I just kept thinking I'm going to lose it, and then I'll buy the nice clothes, but uh, I clothes now. I'm going to shop. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. And, and make it fun. Mm -hmm. And notice every step along the way when you start to apologize. And y it's a subtle thing. It's a subtle thing. Because you'll do it through how you speak. You'll do it through how you mm. laugh. You'll do it through just... It's, it's automatic for you because it's a learned behavior. Are there any people in your life, friends, family, loved ones, who really feel like a good support system for you around all this and they just love you for who you are and they don't get... Mm. S yeah, yeah. There is. Those are the people I want you to make sure you're in dialogue with more throughout this process. I would love for you to share with them what you're working on right now okay. based on this conversation and dialogue with them and ask them for support in this. I'll do that. And it might mean you get on the phone once a day, once a week, whatever it is. Give an update, give a report, and get a little pep talk from them. Um, and share some of your challenges that you've had. Just a place where you can go to unload where you know I'm still loved no matter what. And I'm not going to get judged. <laughs> it's really, I think, important for you to get that support. Okay. Make sense? I, yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. I will do that. Well, Linda, that was a lot. Yeah, it was. Thank you so much. I got so I'm going to listen to this a hundred times, I think. <laughs> Well, I, I really appreciate you being willing to go there and, and, you know, the conversation that we had today, if you were my client, we would have covered all this in about, oh gosh, I don't know, a couple months. This is when all of these things would have unwound. Um, but there's something to be said for, okay, let's see if we can really get in there and hit the target and find, you know, the core places for you to work that's, you know, been holding you back. And, uh, and I think we've arrived there for yeah, you. Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, once again, when it comes to this thing called my body and my weight, we have to really embrace it for what it is because we're trained to embrace it as here's the weight, the weight's the enemy. How do I lose it? So when I finally lose it, I become this more lovable person to me, to you, to whoever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes that strategy works, but honestly, it's a tiny percentage of people. I lose the weight. I feel better about myself. Now my life is great, and I keep the weight off. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> it, it, one, out of, one out of 30 people. Absolutely, yeah. Um, inner shift oftentimes precedes the body shift. 
And I think that's what's happening here. Life is, life is delivering weight as a deeper lesson for us to learn here. And, and it, it's even though if nobody else in your world understands this, that's okay because you, you just need you to understand this. And you just need you to feel that confidence that, okay, here's the direction I need to move in to help myself. So you have to find that inside you. Yeah. Independent of anyone else. Yeah. I agree. Mm. I'm going to work really hard to do that. <laughs> Yay. Good for you, Linda. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for being so open, so real, so honest, so authentic. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Once again, I'm Mark David. On behalf of the Psychology of Eating podcast, I'm glad you're with us, my friends. Lots more to come. You take care. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for listening to the Psychology of Eating podcast. To learn more about the breakthrough body of work we teach here at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, please sign up for our free video series at ipe.tips. That's I for Institute, P for Psychology, E for eating dot tips, T I P S. You'll learn about the cutting edge principles of dynamic eating psychology and mind body nutrition that have helped millions of people forever transform their relationship with food, body, and health.